podcast like this. Who gon' bring it to the table? Boss talk. Who your girlfriend favorite? Boss talk. We gon' do it how you want it. Boss talk. Yeah, everybody on it. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECEO, and I'm here with the lovely, amazing, official Miss Jamaica. What's going on? Nothing, nothing, my dad. Man, hey, man. Hey, it's a beautiful, wonderful day. We made it to see another day, man. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be honest with you, a lot of people didn't wake up today. But we are here, man. And check it, man. <clears throat> we got a guy here today, y'all. He really don't need no introduction. He's been grinding for a long time, man. This is one of our natives, man, here in the D, man. Check it out, man. My boy Throw That says in the building. Yes, sir. What's going on, man? Man, slow motion. Welcome to Boss Talk 101, where the bosses talk. Man. Yeah, that's what I came to do. Say. <laughs> <laughs> talk like a boss. Say, yeah. hey, you better. You're on that stage now. Just yes, like sir. when you cry that mic, you're on that mm -hmm. stage, baby. So mm -hmm. what's going on with you, man? Just tell us, man. Let's get into it, man. What you been up to? No? No, let's go back. We want to go back. We always go back. But I'm so curious. Are you that throat? Why you just have that <laughs> name throat essay? You that throat? Yeah. Uh, so when I was a kid, that's, you know, some me and one, one of my boys, he don't he don't rap no more, but one of my boys growing up, we uh, that was a term we would use because it was thrown around um, in in the Mexican rap community. Mm -hmm. Throw being throwed, you know what I'm saying? So oh, okay, so it's not I, anything you did that it was like, man, you throw. No, nah, I, I mean, yeah, I mean, but I don't just, you know, I don't attach it to just one throw thing. You okay. know what I'm saying? Or oh, was it because I handle my business because I think I deserve to get thrown? <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> no, but, you know, that's the one that nah, really. Yeah, yeah. You in Texas, nigga? Don't play yeah, me. Yeah, I know nah, what's going sure, down, man. Sure. <laughs> mm -hmm. Everybody said throw yeah for uh, sure. uh, uh i it's think jay-z even said throw he tried to yeah. even say throw it's the lingo you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so it's a dope it's a dope name yeah, um so sure. originally from what side of town i'm actually uh i was born in Carrollton. okay right i grew up in the city uh probably to about like third grade and then we moved out to the country so i grew up the lion's share of my life in ennis texas in this mm. Texas, man. Yeah. That's going the country. down. Out in the hey, sticks. No country, nigga. That's country. Race cars out there. Mm. They got a couple of race cars they come say through there. They get, they get they fast cars. You know, it's a lot of money out there. We do, they doing a lot of good, positive, big things out there. Yeah, yeah. yeah I like grown. it. Yeah, it's grown. Uh, so, so growing, how was it growing up in Ennis compared to growing up in the inner city? When you, Because I know once you got up and started looking around, you could see the difference in the way you was raised versus just growing up in the inner city. Man, to be honest, it was. Um, I think it. I think it. it uh, being in a small city amplified everything more. So mm -hmm. although you would think it would slow everything down, because that's the thought process of the parents move their kids out from the city, because like, I don't. Want, I don't want you growing up around this shit. Mm -hmm. But it's because it's so small. It's amplified and everything. You know, like it's a lot easier to get into what you don't want people to get into because it ain't but a few places you can go find, you know, find your issue. So, but then yeah. in, a, in, a, in a country, to me, you can't keep nothing a secret. You exactly. know what I mean? So That's anything you thing. getting in trouble, your parents going to hear about that in a heartbeat and try to nip it in the butt. All right. Yeah, but I mean, I don't, I don't necessarily, yeah, <laughs> I feel, yeah, no, nah, that, that's, that's true too, but you still, you know. I think he's, he mm -hmm. over there by Palm and he's going to that drive-in. Right, right, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yep. I like go every time I go through. I'm like, man, I want to get back over to yeah. drive in, man, right. one day, man. See, I've never been to drive in here in the United States. I've been, of course, you know, I've been. Well, to they back open home. every weekend, or I every? think, yeah, I think so. I'm being. Don't let me lie. I, I don't. We I ain't been it. to we the city. We could hit that thing. Yeah. Okay. We could hit that thing. You want to go what Sunday? Or Anytime something? you're ready. I was trying to wait till the Chevelle get fixed. You know what I'm okay. talking about? Yeah. That SS <laughs> getting fixed, man. I'm gonna pull up on that SS on them boys out there. Yeah. That's a by Enos. One of them, one of them boys might think they got something. I yeah. got to pull up on them boys. <laughs> so did did you have any siblings? Yeah, I got an older sister. Okay, so yes, just two of y'all. Yes, ma'am. Okay, and um, you were raised with your mom and dad. Yep. Okay, that's, that's dope, good. Man. Yeah, yeah, man. Just to have a story, man. So, um, when did you learn that? Hey, man, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, I'm about to. Music. I know I'm for the rap. I got to rap. Right. I got to do this. What inspired so, you? So, my mom's side of the family is from the East Coast. Mm. They from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Okay. So all my family from from the Harrisburg, and then I got some family in the Bronx as well. So that, that there's a one hour line between where where they all reside at. Um, my mom's side of the family, one of my older cousins, they moved to uh they moved to Memphis, Tennessee, uh for a few for a few summers. And when he can't they would uh, and during the summers everybody would come together. Uh and he would come back from Memphis 
and my older cousin would be freestyling his ass off. Oh, yeah? And I was like, damn, that's cold. Like, how you doing that? Like, how you just thinking of things to talk about and all that? So, and how old were you at that time? Uh, 12, 13, mm -hmm. right? So, uh, yeah, once I seen him do it, I'm like, man, I know I can do this. Uh, so I just started, you know, writing. And then around that same time, um, I don't know, um, around that same time or shortly thereafter, there was a, a independent label that came out of Ennis called Deep South Tycoons um, that was funded and they had made BET. One of my one of my partners actually was like the lead artist on the label. He was on BET. He hit Billboard, all kind of things. So between the mix of that and then seeing somebody that was from where we came from actually be able to accomplish, you know, something to a certain degree. I was like, oh, all we got to do is work. If we put the work in, we'll get what we're looking for. Wow. Yeah, that's cool to see that from that young the age. The consistency, right? right? And yeah. I, I think it's dope the fact that, you know, hey, man, this, it, 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 he, he bring the whole, you know, the, the, the brown into this thing. Like, like it's brown when he come on the show. Like, I love, di you know, crossing over cultures. I like mm -hmm. the men, you know, you know, places where where we need to we need to try to figure it all out. You know what I'm saying? Because a lot of the times, you know, if, if we work together, we'll move faster. Yeah. And we gonna need each other too. We definitely need each other. A hundred percent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because <laughs> at the 100%. end of the day, man, uh yeah, we got a tough uphill battle when it comes down to setting standards of what how to change things for our people, to be honest with mm -hmm. you. And if if you look in our in, in our culture and you go look in our prisons, you see nothing but black and brown. Right. And very I mean it's you got forty, forty, ten. Right. Or, uh, really mm -hmm. really forty. It's really 50, 30, you know, yeah. 20, right. something like that. You know what I'm saying? It, yeah. It's a, it's, it's, it's it, for, for sure the blacks, we overpopulated because we cutting right. up every day and we don't know nothing about the law a lot of time. Right. So when you go in that courtroom, you be looking like, damn. Yeah, yeah. Woo, they wow, they look, they damn. Look, they, yeah. But then at the end of the day, um, things are changing. Right. What you think? Uh, I mean, changing in what aspect? I mean, cause, well, cause, cause the subject we on, you know, uh, with the subject we on real quick, free one guy that he come home in five wow. days, See? free, free two, two. Oh, they coming free home. The street. I mean, uh, Some of street, street and two, you know, soon, but God, he come home in five days, but yeah, changing how? When I say changing, meaning we're finding ways to be entrepreneurs in a system where you never had that before hip hop. You, you, I look at the whole global thing. Mm -hmm. You know, I know I'm old, so I know when hip hop came on the scene. Right. When those, when really entrepreneurship is what it is. Right, right. I think that helped elevate a lot of different people. Right. Made a lot of different millionaires, black and brown. Right. Reggaeton and all that different right, music, right, right. man. You got to understand Pitbull a fool with it. Yeah, That's man, a whole honestly, movement. Yeah. So mm -hmm. you got to look at the fact that these things didn't coexist. Before that, it was country, nigga, mm -hmm. and a little bit of R&B. Right. And it was very limited. You had R&B, soul. You had, uh, um, what's that boy name? That, uh, the one that, uh, uh, um, Sam Cooke. Mm -hmm. You had different people yeah. that was making it. Marvin Gaye. But then it, you, you could count them on one finger. But when this hip-hop thing hit the scene and these rappers started taking in, it, it, it crossed over to different countries, it elevated our people in a way that, oh, that yeah, I don't yeah. think people really really pay attention to. Most of the time what people do, they look at the bad and they focus on the bad before yeah. they focus on the good. Right, right, right. I'm right. being real with you. Nah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't, they don't yeah, focus do. on the good like that yeah, yeah. because at the end of the day, it's easy to look at the bad. Right. That's the easy way out. Right. Looking at the good mean I got to do better. Right. Right? Yeah. I see throw that say roll up and he might be in a Bentley or something. You know, sound you know what right, I'm saying? You know, and then me. I got to go get me something. You feel me? I'm yeah. motivated by that instead of hating on that. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Right, right, that's right. what that's what supposed to be happening. Right. But a lot of time people look at that glass half empty instead of half. Empty. Right, right, right. Well, how you get he must be doing yeah, it, he yeah. must be doing that. Then he automatically. Right, right. Not he a businessman and he an entrepreneur right. and he can figure it out. For and sure. I couldn't. Right. You get the same 24 hours in a day to throw that say get it. We all get it. <laughs> what you going to do with it? Exactly. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so what was the first song that really just popped for you, that really you felt like it made some waves? Um, Man, it's that's, that's a tough question because they all, I don't pay attention to anything but personal waves, right? How okay. they made me feel, you know what I'm saying? Okay. So my first song uh, when I was uh, when I made my very first CD that you know you can't find anywhere, that meant 
a lot to me because we would run through the school and sell the CD for $3, $5, and, you know, they would go like hotcakes, and some of my friends would come back in between class and, hey, man, I need another 10 CDs. They gone already. I need another 15. They gone already. Um, but, you know, I, I mean, just like sports, man, you, 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 every every shot is, you know, your last shot's your best shot. You know, your last game is your best game. Whatever you, whatever you put up in the last game, that's what counts. So, um, I'm making my best music right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now, the last project got like that, ri- that that rich off rap slide. Uh, the 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 record. Uh, the the mixtape me and Baby Bounce put out pressure. You know what I'm saying? That's my guy from the uh, West Coast. Uh, yeah, me and Splurge just dropped on World Star to, to get on my level. I was rapping my. You know what I'm saying? You, you gotta get on my level. Hey. I've been wilding out like Tim De La Ghetto. Hey. <laughs> yeah. I ain't gonna lie. I, I, I be wanting to hear that. You know, I I, I told uh, I told Supreme to say you get throw there say to make me a Hispanic. Uh, 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 I wanted it in Spanish. Intro. Right. Intro. Yeah. I need that, man. Yeah, that's easy. He said you could do it. That's easy. I need that. So yeah. when Boss Talk come on, like, I can, I, I really, I'm going to put a whole segment in the middle of it where I might just rock out right. to what you doing. So I can, I, I got some segments I want to do. Right, right, it. right, right, for sure. But I want it to flip and change because I think I try to do things that others aren't doing, you know. Right, right. But you got to do it in Spanish and English because if you do it just in Spanish, you won't even know what he's no, saying. No, I'm cool <laughs> with it. I'll learn. I'll learn. That's that's what the problem is. We're not willing to dig down. Yeah, right. No, I want it in Spanish. Yeah. I'm going to learn that thing. Yeah, whatever yeah. it is, I'm going to be talking that cash. I already know it. Yeah. It's going to be fly. Yeah. And then I'll figure it out. And yeah. then I'm really going to be bad because yeah. I'm going to learn it. Yeah. Right, right, right. right. <laughs> so so how, how how do you ever use that, the diversifying of the fact that you have, you're have bilingual and you're able to take it there? Um, I don't. Why don't you use that? Because um, I, I don't. I have a fear of getting placed in a box. I got a fear of getting pushed too far over that line where it's like, oh, well, no, nah, we don't want you to rap. We you, you Don't rap in English no more. Just rap in Spanish. It's just like, nah, bro, I'm kicking your ass in English. That's how I want to do it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? If, 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 I know you could, you know, depending on who's in front of me, if you can go to the Spanish side and you want me to kick your ass on the Spanish side, I'll do that too. But English is that you know where I grew up at. That's this is a true representation of my environment. I didn't grow up talking Spanish it, when I was running the streets and doing all that. I'm not saying we didn't have no Spanish lingo. I definitely talk Spanish, especially at the household, you know, and with some of my partners. But for the most part, it wasn't. You know, I don't walk around talking Spanish, you know, all day long. So it's. I grew up on the English. And that's so crazy. Because I remember the girl that worked for us. Shout out to Stephania. Um, and but there's she, a lot of Hispanic that go through that same thing where, to me, their parents are not teaching them Spanish. Right. They're only speaking English. And then to me, it's like everybody else wish they could speak Spanish. Like I tell my daughter all the time, nah, you real. need to ace that yeah, Spanish yeah. class because yeah. right now to get jobs or in mm-hmm. music, you say put you in a box, but to to us, it opens up other doors. Right, right. You know, it, it's like it crosses over into other avenues. And your box is just English right here. Right, right. Compared to you doing both languages. And if you even learn a third language, your box even get even right. bigger and bigger and wider and wider. Right. You see yeah. what? No, nah, for sure. Yeah, yeah it, ma- it makes sense. I, it's not, it's, it's, it, it's just that I'll be... You know, part of it is me wanting the acceptance in a game that nece- I, I shouldn't necessarily be seeking validation in. I already know I'm cold. I know nine out of ten people to get in front of me can't write like me. You're not line for line. We go dissect my shit, and I dissect your shit. I'm talking about some. I got punchlines. I got some shit that's going to make you all, oh, man, that shit was crazy. And whoever's on the other side of the table ain't going to be that. So part of it's an internal thing that I got to get away from, right, personally. Um, and then, and then, also something that I gotta build is me wanting to stomp around in that land, you know, because I do have those internal aspirations, like you say, a third language. I, you know, I'm intrigued by French, so I want to learn how to, you know, je, je m'appelle OCV, je voudrais le petit déjeuner. Like I want to learn how to really be trilingual and, and continue to grow and build. Mm-hmm. But it's just you gotta, you gotta dig deep in. You gotta and, want it and, and want it. You know what I'm saying? All the way. And if and, and right now I don't want it enough. Where it's gonna, if I go do it, it's gonna be half ass, and I can't. My brand is too important to me to half ass anything. Yeah, dope. I just I, I sit back and look at how you guys, uh, you know, uh, the just the entertainers that come through the Dallas market. How do you feel about the Dallas movement and the music right now? 
Um, I think that this boss talk. Yeah, I know it. I think that I think that uh, I think that we need to. Uh, I think there needs to be more action, right? And what what I mean by that is uh, my phone, my shit on. It's all good. Uh, what I mean by that is um, you know, we got to be willing to. Um, for the people that's really putting in work, right? Like, I'm not saying you just got to offer this information to any, anybody, but anybody that's seeking the information that's serious, that's looking at, hey, how do I create myself into a brand and be an actual independent label in today's music game? You know, offer up that information and create those avenues and stop giving the bullshit excuses of, oh, well, you know, it's... it's I can't put you on, you know, this because of X, Y, and Z, or I can't. Nah, bro, let's just call a spade a spade. This is music business. Highlight the business for everybody that needs to understand that there's a business piece to it and may help them understand, hey, if you don't have an advertising budget monthly, you are doing yourself a disservice. And the people, uh, the, the people that are quote unquote the what you know they you know the internet be arguing with theyself amongst themselves within you know the city of Dallas and Texas and so forth and so on, like those people, you know, offer this information out to people and give them a clear cut direction on, hey man, if you're not at least doing X, Y, and Z, you you hurting yourself, mm -hmm. right? And offer out that information and um and um you know just. Be be a, be available, man. I remember when I was uh, uh, I caught the backside of the CD era, right? And I used to go, and I was willing to, I, even at that time. I was even though I was check to check, I was struggling. I was scraping the pot. I was doing anything and everything to invest in myself. I would still get turned away and not even give be given information, whether it was because of my race. Oh, we don't listen to Mexican rappers. We don't we don't support that shit around here. Or whether it was because People that were in position and in, in, in quote unquote power with, or what they thought was power, they would just try to hold their nuts on me. And oh, we're bigger. We ain't got time to have a conversation with a small fry like yourself. OK, cool. And but my thing is, it's like, bro, ain't no, no one in no one in the city of Dallas right now has attained or reached a Yo Gotti, a Rick Ross, a P. Diddy, a Steve Rifkin. Uh, whoever you want to call that can actually make a phone call and get somebody a check cut, we don't have that in Dallas right now. Why do you think that is? <coughs> I think it. I think that it's uh the 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 lack of information. Well, we the, got the, we the, got some people here to have the money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. the money is the, here. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> Well, the, the money is here. I mean, you know, the resources is here. You, you, you know, the the Waltons and all them people are here. The, are we not impressive enough? Do we not know how to communicate? You got yeah. Sam Walton's daughter over there worth forty billion dollars. You right. got Jerry Jones here who working with DeRoe. Some, you know, are we not doing the right business deals? I'm a businessman. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. a hustler, see, and, nigga. And, and, and I see the problem. Yeah, Don't yeah. play that. The money is yeah, here. Yeah. Don't play like the money ain't here. Yeah. It's not the money. It's the ambition and it's the desire and the drive and it's the know-how. Right. You got to step up to the plate. You right. got to be able to get into these rooms with these millionaire billionaires. Right. And have conversations and know how to present yourself. Right, but see, see, that's I, okay, <laughs> okay. So that's where the disconnect is because the rooms you get into here in Dallas, they're not music centric rooms. It don't so, have to so, be. Yeah, but but it's different. Whenever you get into a room of people that are everything in here is essentially music driven. They understand the music business. They know how to profit off of it. Now we're talking about artists in Dallas having enough business acumen to be able to communicate. Hey. This is the field that I play in. If we do X, Y, and Z, I can help it benefit your field and you can make some money off me in the process. That's a tough thing for anybody to digest. You know what I'm saying? Like, to, let alone being able to create your own business plan for the business that you desire to be in, but to be able to go and take that business plan, business plan and, uh, and help it translate to somebody like a Jerry Jones that you, he don't give a two shits about a record company. Yeah, but he, but if, if you go to a businessman with a business proposition that is going to pretty much benefit them and grow their brand of what it, what they're doing, right. they're going to work with you. Businessmen see numbers. Exactly. They look uh, at you and they see, you know, you, you got to convince them that it's there. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. They look at numbers. Sometimes they don't even care about what you do, but it's just how you can project 
how much they can make. For sure. Correct. For I, sure. And I, I'm in them rooms, so I, right, I, know, right. I, can walk, I, I can walk in a room in a heartbeat. Yeah, yeah, for so sure. So when you've been in them rooms, you know that the opportunity is there. But then my biggest dilemma is I don't know if I can trust to put a person in this room of this magnitude right. and put my trust in the fact that they're going to be dedicated enough to push through this vision that I'm presenting. Right. That's my biggest issue. I can get in a room, you know what I mean, and say, hey, man, we could do this. I could have been and got in a room where we can do this yeah. well, and, and, and say what I got to say to right. these certain individuals. But I just don't have the trust in the talent and the, and the, and the drive that I see. Yeah. So it's like I'm not going to embarrass myself right. by putting all my nuggets on uh, this certain individual and this certain platform right. and then saying, hey, man, this is going to work. Right. I'm gonna mess myself up with my connects. Yeah, pretty yeah. much is what I'm saying. Yeah, nah, so I gotta sure. I gotta be able to see that driving you. Most of the time, when I pray about it and I start dealing with these individuals, and I'm and I, and I'm willing to take it there, God show me that it ain't what I need to do. For sure, because the person flag, they flop every yeah, time. Yeah, they yeah. flop like a fish out of water. They show their true colors. Right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See that ain't like for me with the, the the thing that I that you know the vision that I have. For the, for for the Dallas scene and my end game is, I don't I don't want to cut a check for you, and I don't want to introduce people that can cut a check for you, because if I don't teach you how to fish, you will not continuously eat when we part ways. So just like the the music game is so exposed now to the point of if you know what to do with the bag and you know how to go get the bag, and then nowadays just like you said, there's so many opportunities, resources like. Uh, I don't know how much people actually pay attention and study the game of music, but I pay attention to everybody. Okay, so if you ain't if you ain't watched this, go back and watch Russ's interview with the Breakfast Club. He left a million dollar jewel in there. He talked about business financing and being able to go get a business credit line of credit. Yeah, which is very it's it's very simple. And what I mean by simple is like within a year's time, you can accumulate a hundred to two hundred k in business financing without having the best of anything put together. Right. If you if you if you do your research and you study. So for me, the end game is teaching people. Um, number one, number one, mastering the program of, OK, how do we do this? OK, I'm going to teach you how to go get your financing. And then I'm also in, in addition to that, I'm going to show you what advertising looks like and knowing and understanding advertisement. Right. Because um, some people they'll get to like even the ones that pop. Right. And I don't I don't know everybody the in and out of everybody's situations and what they got going on. But. Major artists still got to spend advertisement dollars, right? So if you got a regional or a local hit, quote unquote hit, that's on the radio and the, the radio in Dallas starts supporting it, that don't mean stop spending your money to make yourself bigger. That means dump into it more because you already got the support of one of the biggest radio markets in the U.S., mm -hmm. right? And I, I don't know that we understand that. I don't know that we understand that, hey, this, you know, when you want to be a brand and an entity or whatever you want to be, advertising is forever if you want to be alive out here. Oh, most definitely. Um, I, I, I know that 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 big brand could be here if a person really wanted to be that person, if they really um shopped around and, and, yeah. and built those resources. Cause everybody not like throw their say they going they need a platform where they can stand under an umbrella and say, you know what I mean? Yeah. I, I need this. So, so how, how would you, are you willing to sign deals now in this day and time? Or do you like the, the independent route? Man, I want, I'm, I'm trying to, I want to, I want the independent route. I'll take a partnership or something like that, but you got to really be able to show me something that I ain't already figured out through trial and error. You know, I, I, it's, I don't spend so much money. It's like, what you got like, show me and be able to give me a clear, direct answer. That's going to, you know, communicate. I'm, I'm a direct communicator. So I need you to tell me straight up. Don't I don't need no icing on the cake, man. Let's cut. Let's cut to the mustard and tell me about what you what you what it is you can do for me or you can't do for me and be realistic. So you mentioned that interview that um, about financing. How long ago did you watch that interview? Uh, the interviews less than 30 days ago. Less than 30 days. So yeah. you have started implementing what he has said I, in I, your life? Yeah, I had already been working on that. But the fact that one of the biggest artists in the world came mm -hmm. out and publicly stated that, I'm like, bro, like, it, it, it re for me personally, it mm -hmm. reaffirmed, like, okay, 
You know what you know what you're doing. You know what I'm saying? Like you know that you can be your own bank and not have to give away your masters and do uh you know sign yourself into a deal where people start feeling the type of way after you blow up. You know, but like like shit, if if you don't want to feel no type of way about you getting thirty percent of your Mm -hmm. money, then go put up the two hundred k yourself. It's possible. You may not just be able to make it happen today. It may be twenty four months from now. Are you willing to stay committed to your craft, work on whatever it is you're working on, and be the best version of you within the next 24 months so that when it, that time does come, you can execute? Right. Because a lot more people are becoming, um, are, are staying independent right now. Yeah, 100%. Yeah. Well, because it's, I mean, the music is, I mean, a million streams, $4,000. Right. Download. Come on. Yes, sir. And you, I mean, that ain't a lot. It's not. So a lot of capping going on out here too. But I mean, although a I mean, lot of people I'm, I'm, are, I'm trying to figure out how much money people are really making, or how how are they doing it? If you don't have no merch, if you don't have certain things going on to where you can pretty much uh, strategize uh, selling tangible items some right. kind of way, are they? Are is 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 Instagram just cap? <laughs> Gee, I could. I ain't any boy pocket to tell I'm you. I'm just man. being real. I, I mean, yeah, yeah. where is this money coming from? Social is it coming is from cap. the street? Yeah, yeah. Is Instagram? Is is Facebook just cap? Is I, is, I, is 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 TikTok just cap? Is it a lot of dancing and yeah. fronting and stunting and right. pumping and n- jumping and, right. and and really you go back home and you look down and say, damn, damn I'm <laughs> fucked up out here. <laughs> boy, I need a, can somebody I give mean, me a is, slice is of this bread? One, is this, I mean, because um. You hear these people that they putting their money up for the videos, mm-hmm. and, then, and 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 shout out to all the people that do it because they're bosses in their own nah, way because they're putting their money up and basically pushing and paving a way, and it's really. You got to glamorize it just to get people to even stay interested yeah, yeah, in it. Unless you're very, very lyrical and you're able to do things and dissect things in a way to where people are going to pay attention to it. Right. Most people don't have that talent. A lot of this stuff is trash out here. Mm-hmm. Y- y'all ain't I'm ready for that. Yeah, yeah, this stuff need to be. It, you, we we got to push. We got to push harder. Right. And I think there's a lot of people, a lot of homeboys, look in the car with them, listening at this stuff and saying it sound good. Right. When everybody else, it's too much auto tune on it, or it ain't got enough auto tune on it, or right. it ain't sounding right. The, the engineering sucks, right. and right. ain't nobody the homeboy ain't telling them that because they just want to try to ride with them because yeah. they ain't got no car. Right. They just want their verse. Man, let me put Pumi on the other team. <laughs> so this is what's going down. Yeah. Like a lot of times, right. there's not a lot of money that I can see that people are really okay to shows, unless you're a big artist. Yeah. I mean, the show money that, has been kind of it's, it's, it's funny. Light. Yeah. So I, I tell, man, when people, here's one thing about me. You can hit me and I'm going to shoot you straight. And I tell people all the time, it's artists inbox me all the time, upcoming artists. And I'm like, bro, listen. I need you to make a decision if you really love this because you're going to be upside down for a little bit, Mm -hmm. right? And when you upside down, the toughest part about being upside down is you don't have the luxury to stop. You have to keep going. I don't give a fuck what it costs you. Now, be make decisions, right? If you got, because I don't, what I want these boys doing is don't let your baby starve over, over having to put a video out, but you cannot stop. So if that means you swallowing your pride and motherfucking, uh, having to go get a nine to five or whatever you need to have you three or four hustles that way you can be upside down for a little bit if you want to take the independent round now if you want somebody to sign you and they put their money up and shit then all you need is enough to get uh, you know enough exposure you can pay a few blog sites and hopefully somebody comes into you you know hit you up and say hey man i'm gonna put the money up for you but even that you know i know real life deals right now where people don't put up 30 50k and they uh, hey you want to buy this artist no mm. No, y'all went into that blindfolded. It didn't even think this shit all the way through, thinking that fifty thousand was enough. It's not. It's a lifestyle, and it's just so you got to make the decision. How long? Like, is this for real? Because if it's for real, how the, much does it take? Man, it, it's the, a lifestyle. Man, it's, just told y'all that. It's, it's the, the, the it, it's all it's documented from artists that's significantly better than me that I look up to. And it, my young Dolph, you know, our rest in peace. He was on on document saying two hundred and fifty to an M to push one record. Of what I tell everybody it's now, a what, lifestyle. What what game do you want to play? Are you trying to play high school ball? You want to play uh, YMCA ball? Or you trying leagues. to play in the in the big the big league? Because the big league come with a you know it, that with it, a price tag. It come with a price tag. It's a lifestyle. 
I'm going to keep saying it. Mm -hmm. At the end of the day, I love life, too, because it, it, it steps up to you, too. Right. Life step up like this. Mm -hmm. And it be like, man, what you want to do? What you going to do? What you going to do? And right. it, it, it puts all, it put it in your face, too. Right. Like, you good? No, you ain't good. Yeah. Put it on Instagram. Right. Put it on YouTube. I ain't getting no <laughs> views. It sucks. Yeah. And you still trying to tell somebody to put, go put it on. Let's go put it on half paint. Yeah. Let's go put it over here so we can make it go do what it do. Let's go. It, but it, it ain't going to do what right. it's going to do because you got to do more. Right. You got to do better. Right. Let's and, go. And, just try to get it on say then on the storyline. Yeah. You're right. And, <laughs> hey, yeah. hey, and I'm going to go back to this. Look, even if you are, because, you know, hustle will beat skill if skill ain't hustling. Right. If you hustle hard enough and you don't got it, because we don't hurt some artists now. Oh, I like that. <laughs> say it again. Come say it again. Now. He said, "Hustle." The, the, the hustle can, can will out will mm -hmm. outlast the skill if the skill don't hustle, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So if you got enough hustle, you can get out I'm here now. Take that. But again, this is then you got to think about this shit just like a business. Coca Cola is one of the biggest brands in the world. They still spend advertising dollars like it's nobody's business. Why? Well, well you, I'm gonna be honest yeah. with you, bro. You got to do it. I'm gonna be honest. and and you can fall too. Oh yeah, you. Let me tell you fall. something. I done seen some in this business and over the last year of traveling, going to Atlanta, going to Vegas, going to Cali, going to Houston a couple of times, going over here, going over there, going to East Texas, going to Louisiana. I've seen a lot of people, and the people I've seen, some of them y'all know, right. household names. They mm -hmm. in the back now. Yeah. They back in the back. Yeah. Say, man, yeah. what's up, man? Nah, I ain't going to do no interviews, man. <laughs> I ain't doing nothing. I ain't got nothing to what I'm going to talk about. Right. Because they don't have nothing. Because at the end of the day, they, they something bad happened. A depressive state pushed them into mm -hmm. a corner to where one of the homeboys made it and the other one didn't. Mm -hmm. And he owned like hell right now. Right. And then the other one saying, damn, he left me. Right. Right. Damn. This is happening. Right now. I'm telling you, I'm having a conversation. And it's not easy, me, man. It's not easy for people to. I've had them right there freeze. Right. It just messed me up. I can't believe it happened to me. It, right. Yeah, right there. Right there. Right there. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, they still ain't got over it. Right. So what do you do? How do you how do you keep going when things don't just go exactly the way you thought they would and people don't they don't ask for you? Yeah. They don't even want to pitch you no more. I mean, you just said it. Yeah. You said you said you just said a minute ago. Life gonna look at you. Life gonna ain't look at you. It's gonna look you up and down. That's what I'm talking it's gonna, about. It's gonna see what you really Stick talking your about. Take your chest out. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Life it's, is the best teacher in mm -hmm. the world. And everybody ain't the same. Some people will use that and be like, "I'm gonna prove it to everybody that I exactly. can succeed. Yep. That I'm going. You know, this ain't no failure. This is motivation. Right. But yeah, some people will take it in cave. Uh huh. Can't 100%. deal with the pressure. And I look at that like if you cave on or something like that and go ahead and change your career do something else For sure. because it's going to keep coming it's going to come even harder coming. later on yeah. if you cave on to that it, it it's just not going to work for you right right and, it, and, it, and it's a hundred ways man like I, you know i love i love what i truly love what i do that's why i, st I do it consistently and i'm so mm -hmm. i'm hungry for this it takes passion but um, it's a million ways to be a millionaire here, man. Mm -hmm. You got you got real estate agents that live like what we wish we could live like. You got mortgage loan officers that live like what we wish we could live like. You got sales, you know, district managers, you know, like for big big box corporations that you must make some good money. So you know what I'm saying. So you ain't got to be in love with you know just if if when it looks at you and you realize it ain't this, hey, that's cool. Go find something that you really love and, you know, push it to the max. But you know how many people out here are in a career that they don't love? They're just in it for the money. They're just in it to pay the bills, right. supply for their kids. They just go to work. They hate going to work every day, right, but they right. just go because they have to. They got to. You know what I mean? Right. Oh, yeah, you, you got to understand, man. It's it, Hey, man. These boys, man, they don't understand this grind and change. You, mm -hmm. you looking for a 360 deal, you ain't got to worry about it. It ain't coming. Yeah. Yeah, 360 time is over. Everybody want to talk about 360 yeah. deals. Them deals are already done. Right. They got a new thing now they're doing, man. Mm -hmm. What they give you, they tell you they're going to be there for you. It's a dream, man. Right, Everybody right. happy for a season. Ain't nobody pop. They shelling smoke out here. 
<laughs> so what's next for Throw to SA in the music industry? What are you coming? He need to bring next? somebody under me. Ain't got no little underdog. That's just basically yeah, yeah. he need to put somebody, one of them young boys, on them and let them let them ride the way. Yeah. I'm sorry for answering the question for you. <laughs> that's what he need to do. I, I know his name is Throw to SA. Not I'm Throw to <laughs> SA number two. Oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, nah, that's 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 definitely coming, man. I, you know, I, I definitely want to go the executive route. Um, it's just a timing thing, man. Like I, you know, again, I'm I'm very protective of my brand, uh, of my time. You know, I got children, I got a wife, I got people that, um, you know, require X amount of attention from me, and and music in itself, the industry in itself requires a lot from you, just for me as a personal artist. So. I know what, you know, the extra weight is going to be added. So it's just a timing thing for me. But I'm definitely working on that. Have active conversations with the uh, the gentleman I do uh, call my team. And uh, it'll come. It'll come. I mean, for, for it, but for right now, if you need any games, I'm here. Do you think you're giving the music industry 100% no. right now? No. How is it possible for anybody to give the music un- industry 100% when you have a family? Is uh, it possible? No, I think I think it is. I think it is. It's just it's just you gotta make you gotta make some of those uh you gotta make some tough decisions. And I there was a time that I did make decisions like that. There was a time that I did miss birthdays and I did you know, I had you know, tough, tough fights and tough, you know, in house times where this shit was, you know, a hurricane at where where, I, where we was at. But um yeah, today I won't I won't, you know, I, I already I already did that. I'm not doing it again. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, but but uh, through all that, it was necessary. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and I only say that I'm not giving it a hundred percent is because yeah, I was about to ask you why. Yeah, yeah. I say I'm not giving it a hundred percent because I kind of um I kind of found my flow for what I need to do. And for me, the key is consistency. That that's been my 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 whole thing is just consistency and my brand. I'm not looking for uh for for me to be in a hundred and twenty. Uh, countries tomorrow overnight if I if it comes it comes but if not I'm gonna sit in the pocket and I'm gonna keep hitting these threes and I'm gonna put my you know I'll put my legacy up the way I need to put it up you know what I'm saying like I, I, I've i there was a time where I would look at this person that person and I'm like damn bro I want you know my I want it to go like that for me but you know what I'm saying like I can't I can't rush nothing that you know what I'm saying he he dictates that right. you know what I'm saying so I just got to play my position Shark Gang. What does Shark Gang represent to you? What is that? Uh, Shark Gang is um is a representation of uh my OG from Houston. One of my OGs. He was one of the first um, big guys that gave me a um uh, like took me up under his wing all the way. You know what I'm saying? I met my, it, it, it's a it's a reflection of my guy Poncho V. I met him through Baby Bash. Baby Bash saw me online. He reached out. Um, this was at a time where he was on fire too, and he just showed so much love and was down to earth. So um, he brought me to Houston, brought me around some people, and then Poncho V had a, a hit record back in uh, the early 2000s uh, called Nasty Girl. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, you know, on the Mexican side, I'm super familiar with, with who he is and what he's done and what his resume is. So um, we were the uh, his record label at that time was Salty Water Records. So. You know, I made, you know, Shark Gang and put in, you know, just stamped it on me. Like, man, yeah, man. Yeah, I my saw boy the necklace says Shark Gang. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, let me yeah, ask you. He, he, gave, ahead, me, he gave me a lot of games. So, you know, it's just, uh, I'm I'm a super loyal guy. And uh, that's and, cool. That means uh, when anybody slows down and will give me energy that they didn't have to give, it means the world to me. And I'm super mm-hmm. appreciative, appreciative of that because I done had the door closed on me so many times. For no reason, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay. Well, what about <clears throat> uh, Supreme? What does Supreme mean to you? Because <clears throat> I know when I talk to uh, uh, Cam Capone News, and, and that's how right. I found out about you, to be for honest sure, with you. For sure. Because I was asking him, how did Supreme end up at, at his house? Right. Or at his studio? And he was like, oh, I don't remember. And then he was like, Supreme, was like, yeah, throw that essay and me was over there. Right. So so how <laughs> how did you and Supreme link up and and what what's that all about? Yeah, so me and Supreme been familiar through a producer um, that I knew. Shout out my boy Fetty. Um, he he been on me about knowing Supreme and and and, and uh, locking in with Supreme. How long ago? It's some years ago. It's for it's, it's been a while, but um, 
uh, we never, we never really, uh, we never really caught up. But anyway, we 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 would pay attention to each other. Let's just put it like that. And um, once I got a, uh, you know, as of late, like I, I I keep hitting little strides and little you know key highlight moments for my career. And after one of them, uh, Supreme reached out to me. We got on the phone. Uh, he congratulated me. We had a little conversation, and uh, he threw some at me, and then I threw some at him. Um, and without hesitation, again, energy. Uh, Supreme made some phone calls for me and got me on the phone with some people that I've been trying to hunt down that with nobody. And I yeah, know, some it, pe- he? yeah, he, you know, it got me on, on the phone with some people that I know other individuals could have put me on the phone with, but chose not to, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, so, um, yeah, man. So ever since then we locked in and, uh, yeah, bro, like, you know, Supreme down to earth, he, uh, he leverages his resources for me. And, you so know, that's, that's a part of his managing technique mm-hmm. that he yes, utilizes for you. Mm-hmm. So if something going down, he he one of the guys that you can call and he gonna make it happen. Or he gonna call you and say this here is happening. Right, right. That's dope, mm-hmm. man. So because I know K Breezy, she she rock with him, been rocking with him for years. For sure. And and you rocking with him, and I think that's dope. And I think it's one more guy that he told me about, but he always talk highly of you, man. I think that's dope that you guys have had a relationship for over years now, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's dope to have that connection, man. To have the unity, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, what about um uh the top three artists of all time? I was just about to ask that. <laughs> my yeah. top my top three artists of all you time. Dead that or alive, dead any alive. genre. Number one. Man, impact. Uh, Number one. In- impact to me, I would say. Uh, I would say uh, big. Biggie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You and Mike Jones both. Keep Number going. one. <laughs> mm-hmm. Number two. I say Biggie. I say. Um, I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with I'm gonna, I'm gonna say Biggie M, and I'm gonna go current with Gates. Oh okay. Gates, so yeah. Biggie Eminem. Eminem. Yeah, yeah. Boy, yeah. I had some controversy on there about mm-hmm. that. Boy, Eminem dope. He got lyrical. You you going for lyrics? With Eminem. That's why did you pick Biggie? Why did you pick Eminem? And why did you pick get Kevin Gates? Kevin Gates. Uh, he, uh, Biggie was the first. Um, so when I started learning how to rap, I would memorize other rappers. Mm-hmm. Music and it was always big versus not um, Tupac. Not it wasn't. I don't. Yeah. <laughs> I fuck with Pac though, but it wasn't like he didn't. I really rocked with, with, with the shit Biggie was okay. putting down. So big and then uh M, his uh his uh his lyric like he, lyrically he's I don't care what they got to t- I don't care what they talking about none of that M, not a better artist in if we if we talking lyrics M is at the top of the list. I don't care how they feel about it. It's him. Okay. I, I could I could really give you some <laughs> smoke on that, but yeah. I'm gonna let you make it <laughs> yeah. because I just you know I just don't agree with that. I, yeah. I, I'm not saying that I'm not, but I, I think out of your list, I think Kevin Gates the hardest out of all of them. Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. talking about lyrically and everything, and his persona and his intelligence and the way that he handled that no. mic yeah. better than Biggie. Yeah, for sure. But for it sure. hurt, then when I said that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, niggas don't want to hear that. I, nah, I'm good. from the south, man. It's good. I fuck I'm with Gates, <laughs> Kevin. And yes. Kevin Gates go hard. You know what I'm saying? And if any a family man. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the day, a black man keeping a family together in these day and times, I respect it to mm-hmm. the utmost. Yeah. So for him to be a family man, that's gonna put him at number one on my right. list. Right. And 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 for him, the lyrics and his voice and his cadences right. and the way that he come off is thorough. Right. So I, I feel like the, out of all them three artists, I can't say Eminem because at the end of the day, he came into a culturistic thing right. where it's he got his own. I can't relate to his issues. So it's hard for me right, to right, right. try to figure out, OK, this is what I'm going to do. But have he have he been successful? Yeah. I think the red carpet gets laid out for him a little bit more easier, too, than a than a than a little Wayne or somebody like that. Right. I'm just being real for right. me. I think yeah. he gets the red carpet. He going to get the red carpet every time because this is we in America, Jack. Right. I'm not trying to play with this thing. Right, right. But but where my guys come from, the guys who uh, got it out the mud. Uh, you know, I'm 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 definitely uh, if I go up New York, I'm old cat, so I'm I'm going to Eric B and Rakim, some right. real throat. So right. at the end of the day, those are the big homies. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but sure. down south, it's Kevin Gates going. Yeah. It's going yeah. down through there on that list yeah. you just gave. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah easy. Yeah. So, but that, that's what that's what the top three is all about. Really, it's people get to give they they because we need to know where things are right now. Right. And I think that top three helps us to know where each individual feels 
things off for and them. And some people come up with some names, like new names, because they're inspired by some of these new people who are coming up. So it just right. it, this is your choice. This is a, your opinion. Your top three. And I just gave my opinion on your top three. That's all I did. Yeah. I wouldn't. Have, I wouldn't have picked those top three because I'm Pimp C all day long, baby. Right, right. But at the end of the day, I can play with your top three all day long. <laughs> Kevin Gates gonna be at the pinnacle of that thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, so, um, what, what, where can people get a hold of you if they want to try to book you for a show? If they want to just try to get you to come and do an interview, or just trying to get that throat essay? How would they get at you? Yeah, everything is uh, at throat essay. Spell it proper, uh, and then uh, uh, it's T H R O W E D E S E. And then uh, you know you can hit my my profile on Instagram if you want to live. You know you want to talk to me live. You know we got some booking numbers in there. You can get a hold of us. You know what I'm saying? Just make sure it's official. Already, man. Yeah. So, so um, any, did we leave anything out? No. You sure? Mm-hmm. We nah, tackled we them all. No, nah, we did. We did. So look, this well, is what let's did. go. Did. You for the rap? Yeah. Nah. <laughs> yeah, nigga, you better give me my sixteen bars. Yeah, yeah. nigga, so, I turn the beat on right now. Right. Don't play, nigga. Yeah, right. right. Yeah, yeah. Nah, they, look, they'll love it. Look, so so because we on boss talk, I want to make sure I make this clear. You know, because you know, we we had this. We slightly touched on this conversation when we was on the phone, e, and um. The Mexican artists, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I really want the, the things to change for Mexican artists. And um, I don't want to go into the long debate of whether I feel like we are getting a look or we're not getting a look. You know what I'm saying? But I want to be clear. Make sure we working. Uh, make sure that the music is fucking fire so that they can't deny it. Let the music speak for, it, speak for itself. But educate yourself on the business. And shit is not free out here. You can't go into Walmart and get what you want at the price you want. It don't work like that. That's not the world. Wow. This is a business, right? And I wish somebody would have told me this 10 years ago when I first started hitting the pavement, or five years ago even. Somebody would have just sat me down and said, throw, stop fucking walking around looking for a handout, bro, and get on your shit. Because if they ain't going to give it to you and you really want it, then that means you got to hustle, hustle your ass off to make it come to you. And that's what I did. Wow. Right. And that's what I'm doing it, each and every day. I'm always looking for, for, for game. I'm always learning. I'm never too smart. I'm not never too cocky. If anybody got some, you know, I get around someone and they got some shit that put on the ground that I need to pick up and I'm going to slow down and pick it up. Already. That's, that's dope, man. For you, Do you to- ever try to reach out to <clears throat> any other um, Hispanic um, rappers and be like the younger ones coming up and try to like educate them and stuff like that? I definitely have had conversations, um, you know, they'll, I've been engaged and I've engaged some, um, but, um, yeah, at the same time, I'm in my own world and they're in their own world. So it ain't, it ain't something that we slowing down. So that's why while I'm here and I can, you know, I can take that little clip and mm-hmm. make this shit go do what it, do what it's supposed to do. I want to do that and make sure I highlight that because, um, you know, the business side of the music is, is what where where we lack and what we need to be stronger on. And um shit, Google will tell you how to build a house if you take the time to look for it. That's and right. don't get discouraged by people when yeah, they put man. you down because yeah, they pe- feel like you don't belong in the music industry. Yeah, everybody ain't gonna love you. Everybody ain't gonna think your shit hot. That's okay. What do you think? You know what I'm saying? And if you are checked it, I hey man, trust me, I've been there. I've been robbing Peter to PayPal to make this shit happen, to make it look like it was something that it never really was. I was I had times like that. So if that's what your current situation is, but you love this enough to where you like, man, when at five years from now I'm still gonna be a rapper ten years from now and I got a daughter and she five, I want her to know that her daddy or, or, or her if you're a, a female, her mama out here putting in this motherfucking work. Then take this shit serious. Google, learn, ask questions. Everybody might not give you an answer, but some people might, and shit, whatever they give you, you know, apply it. That's real talk, man. Hey, man, uh, throw that. Say we love you, bro. Um, love, it, love your energy. Um, uh, we, we. Once we get you in, you family. So you know, so, whenever you got something that you dropping a project, or if you trying to get somebody to be noticed, and you 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 say, hey, E, um, this person is a good one, man. Yeah, yeah, sure. You know, uh, let me know if it's something that 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 we know that that that's really where that work ethic is that you just spoke on, right? Because a lot of people don't put that work it work ethic in. They right. just they want it. They want it. And don't want to put you know, the work in to get yeah, it. Yeah, so yeah. we got to make sure we deal for that. And we don't want to just water these. You know, this platform right here, man, we we just, we loving the vibes. 
Yeah. We're getting the right people, man. Yeah. And we appreciate you for coming on Boss Talk 101 where the bosses talk. Yeah, for sure. For sure. <laughs> for Check sure, it, man. man. It's been another great segment of Boss Talk 101, man, where the bosses talk. Yes, yeah. sir.